Hi, welcome to the Eco Heidi Show. I'm Heidi Borchers. This is the place to find fun and creative projects using items that you might normally throw away. So it's all about recycling, reusing, repurposing, upcycling, and doing it all creatively. On today's show, I have several projects to show you, and I also have my friend Candace J that has a fabulous project. Are you ready to get started? You know, I've showed you how to use water bottles for using for bracelets, for jewelry. What about the caps that are on the water bottles? Take a look at this project. The fun thing with this project is just collecting all the cool water bottle caps and uh, make it into this cool snake. So first thing you need to do is to collect at least 25 of the water bottle caps. Remember that the size is going to depend on the water bottle cap and also we're going to use some drinking straws. So you're going to want to first drill all 25, just take a, take a drill, go down to the top, and then one of them is going to have a hole on the side. This is going to be for the head. So then we're going to paint them, and all I do is just use an acrylic paint and a cosmetic sponge and just dab it on and all paints will act different some of them will cover really good some of them will cover a little bit uh, differently so just you know add a couple coats letting it dry in between and when you have them all painted then just set it aside to dry that's when you have all 25 and again, if you want to come back in when they're dry and put another coat on them for darker, you can do that. So when they're dry, we want to cover them with fabric. Now I'm going to, I like to do my fabric, I like to rip my fabric strips. So I wasn't sure, for those of you that don't know how to just rip the fabric strips, just put a little slit there in your fabric, and it's about a half inch, and then just rip. And there you have your half inch strips and that's what's going to go on the side of each one of these. Now also don't feel like you have to do them all the same color. On my both of my samples they're all different colors. My brown one I had I had green and gold and orange and uh, just to chose the different colors of the fabric too. So we're going to take and put some glue around here. Put my fabric strip into the glue, trim it, a little bit more on the end, and there you have your first piece for your snake. You're going to do all 25 of them with different fabrics on each one. And then you're going to do the one, do the one that has the side hole, put it all the way around and then you're going to put a circle on the top and that'll be for the head. Now for the spacer beads you're going to want to, like I said, you're going to want to use the straws so I cut just little pieces and they need to be a little bit bigger than the depth of the of each water bottle cap and then again all I do is put a little bit of took the glue on there and wrap the wrap the strip around like so and that's a spacer now when you have all these ready best thing to do is to lay them out on something that uh, like fabric where they don't roll around because I've kind of got these all together so first thing you're going to do is you're going to use a beading wire. And the beading wire is over here a little bit. The beading wire is going to be as long as the snake you want the snake to be. And then I also have a little crimp bead right there. It's just a little metal bead. It goes on the end of the wire. So I push the wire through my head. Here's my head covered and I also put two little eyeballs on it. And I'm going to crimp that bead 
right into place there. And I have a little bead here to hold it so it won't go through. Then I put a couple of buttons and then I just start putting on my caps and after each cap I put a spacer a spacer straw. And you can see how the snake is starting to take shape. And when you get completely to the end, we're going to kind of pretend like this is it completely at the end. You're again going to add all kinds of different buttons. And beads. In between each button you can add a bead. So you have a space probably about, oh, maybe two inches long. You have beads and buttons. You can even use spacer straws. And at the very end, again, you add one of the spacer beads, or the crimp beads. Put the crimp bead on. and just crimp it with your, your crimpers. Now let me show you with my other snake here. This is the, this is the one that's the different pastel colors. Here we have the head, a couple beads, we have a couple of the, um, the eyes, and in between each one is a spacer bead. Spacer bead. And see how they're all different colors? And we got to the end here, and we put a button, we put a spacer bead, button, beads, and then very end is a little crimp bead. And that finished it off. And it just, it'll move all around, and it's lots of fun because it's all different colors, or you can do the brown, brown tone one. Wasn't that a great project? Now you got to start saving all your uh, plastic water bottle caps. You know, my friend Candace J has a project today that she's going to show us that's showing us how to remember to buy local. But before we get into that, I wanted to talk about another project. We've talked about this before. It's called the 350 Project. It's saving your local brick and mortar stores, and it's all about saving your local economy. And I think it's really, really important now that we do that. It, what it means, the 350, is pick three local businesses and spend $50 monthly. Did you know that for every $100 that you spend at a locally owned independent store, $68 of that returns to the community through taxes, payroll, and other expenditures? If you spend that in the national chain, only $43 stays here. You spend it online and nothing comes home. 
So be sure you check out the 350 Project and see what you can do in your local community to uh, help the local businesses. So next we've got Candace and she is going to show us a great jewelry project. Candace, Thanks Heidi, I am thrilled to be part of your show today. I'm going to be demonstrating a lovely little souvenir bracelet made from coffee cup sleeves. These amazing coffee cup sleeves were the inspiration for this project. I had the fortune of having an art show at our local coffee place and these were designed by local artists. That's why this project is called Buy Local First. It's a bracelet made out of recycled coffee cup sleeves that just happened to be fabulous looking. To make this bracelet I also used a needle tool, a nice flat paint brush, a nice pair of scissors, clothespins, and a nail file, dimensional sealer, sparkly sealer, my favorite super thick tacky glue, I've got a pair of wire cutters, I happen to have the smallest paintbrush in the world, I just love these. Um, some stretchy string, one millimeter diameter, 20 gauge copper wire, flat pliers, and a hole punch, and also some black acrylic paint, and a nice paper towel to cover your surface to protect it. I cut out some of the design elements that I really liked and paired them up. I'm going to pair these up right here doesn't matter if they're the same size to start with. You get the best edge you can get by trimming them together. I wasn't really trying to make squares. That's just how my shapes ended up squarish. And I like to blunt the corners just because that's my preference. And it's kind of fun to send the little tiny paper bits flying through the air in your studio. Okay, now they're the same size. I'm going to punch a hole in one of them. Then I'm going to line them up again. And punch the hole through the second one. Now comes the super thick tacky glue. So you can see these are kind of coming together pretty quickly and easily. It's not uh, not difficult at all to do. So while that's drying, I'm going to set it on this doohickey that I made. It's just masking tape rubber cemented down to a piece of cardstock so that it can hold my little pieces still while I'm working on them. Now I'm going to, while it's drying, brush it with a little bit of the glitter sealer and then this one is dry so I'm going to go ahead and put on the dimensional sealer. Go all the way out to the edges and get as close as you can to the hole without going in it. It's, it's not a big deal if you actually get in it because you can just, you can carve it out. Alright, this one has it on both sides already and it's finished. It has tool holes in it because I'm going to try a different project with that. But let me show you how I finish the edge. This is where the fingernail file comes in. Some of them have uneven edges even though you tried really hard <laughs> to keep those edges flush. And I'm not pushing very hard because the paper will splay pretty easily. It'll just spread right out. Okay, I like the way that looks. 
So now it's time for some black paint. And the tiniest paintbrush in the world. The reason that you do this part after you seal it is so that it's going to be easy to wipe off if you get some on the front. And this is where the clothespin comes in. So I'm just going to go all the way around. And that's going to be an additional sealer too. So if you're wearing this and you're washing your hands several times a day, that should help keep the paper from deteriorating. All right, so then you set that down to dry. Before we begin our bracelet design, we're going to make some jump rings. This is really easy to do. This is all I'm using the needle tool for on this project, but the needle tool still feels useful. So wrap it around, push it together like that, pull it off, and then cut through the first two, and you have a jump ring. Now, in the same spot as the first cut, cut another one. This works even better with a flush cutter, but I do not have a flush cutter, so I'm just using my side cutter. There are two. So you get the idea. Now, you're going to put the jump ring through. And you're going to hold it like that with the pliers. And you're going to give it the best touch that you can so it won't come off easily. All right, so that's all I had to do as far as getting those ready to go on the bracelet. When I design a bracelet, I like to lay it all out, all the charms and beads, to see what's going to look best. And then I might string and restring it three or four times to get just the look that I want. Now in this case I needed to use two larger beads to sandwich each of the jump rings because the jump rings were large so the charms wanted to all slide together. So this is the way I have put it together and I have tried it on my wrist and it's a good fit. It slides easily over my hand and isn't too tight on my wrist. And now I'm going to tie the ends of the string together. Get them as close as I can to the edge. There we go, of the bead design. And I'm going to give it some tight pulls and then I'm going to pull the opposite way. Just go back and forth a few times and really, really tighten it up. Before I cut it, I'll put a dab of crazy glue on it and then I'll cut the ends of the strings but my isn't that a lovely charm bracelet it has some good movement to it and some nice colors I like it before I cut the excess string off I put a dab of crazy glue on the knot to make sure it would hold and when it was dry and I snipped the ends off I ended up with this lovely souvenir bracelet I love what it represents I love the time that I had that whole month at the coffee shop. I'm so glad I got to share it with you. Back to you, Heidi. Thanks, Candace. That was a great project. Love that. My next project is using cereal boxes. And I recently read on the internet that the U.S. consumes 2.8 billion boxes of cereal a year. 2.8 billion boxes. So what are we doing with all those cereal boxes? Well, I have a project using them for mosaics. So let's take a look at this project. Here's the actual project that I'm going to show you today. This is the coaster that's made with cereal boxes. It has plastic on the, the top and the bottom, and you can see the, the cereal box here. And it's really easy to do, so let me show you how. First thing you need is a piece of cereal box and we're going to turn it over and on the back or the inside we're going to paint it black and just use an acrylic paint
And just brush it on. Until you have it all covered. Now I'm going to put this one aside because I already have one dry. Here's my one that's already dry. And I'm going to take and measure out my squares. Now, let me give you a hint here too, is that if you don't, if you have just a regular ruler, you don't have one of these see-through rulers, I mean, this is like a must in my toolbox. I love this ruler because you can see through where, and any time you want to measure, you can see through. So this shows me a half inch, and that's what I want. I want half inch lines. And see, I can see underneath. If you don't have one of these rulers, be sure you go out and buy yourself one because it is so easy to see through things. So you're going to go like that. You're going to go all the way across, and then you're going to go down. So it's going to be like that. So this is showing me all my different squares that I can put my pieces in. Then I go and I cut some strips, some half-inch strips of different colors of the of the cereal boxes. And I have some here in green. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to do I'm going to glue some use some glue. And I just usually put a little dot and then I just put my little pieces, the little pieces that I cut, they're ha like half inch by half inch and I just go right along and glue them. And if I need to trim then I'll just trim them to fit. Okay, so then you do what I did was different colors and went all the way down and I have one here that's already ready. Now, if I turn this over, you can see where it's gone over the edge. So what I do is I cut them. So I'm just trimming off that extra. Then I have two pieces of clear plastic and I actually have used the shrink plastic, the clear shrink plastic for my cover. And I have this tape that I put on it and I wanted to show you that this is the, it's a silver copper foil and it's a tape that you you use in like stained glass and it's about a quarter inch and it comes with like 36 yards and what I do is I cut it a little bit more than four inches I cut four pieces It's a self-adhesive tape. You peel back the back. And you have to be really careful when you pull this the tape off because it gets sometimes it gets really curly. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to line this up. I want the the middle of that plastic right in the middle of the foil. You see that? And sometimes you have to kind of adjust it a little bit. Try not to put your fingers into the foil too much. And I do all four sides like so. Now either you can cut it at an angle like I have here, make sure all your corners are, or you can just do the square corner. So I'm going to put that down on my tabletop, my workspace, and remember that the sticky side is showing up. So I'm going to put my 
mosaic facing down. I'm going to put the next piece of plastic over the top. And then I'm going to line it up and then I just want to make sure I just take it with my fingernail and then I push it over. Making sure that it gathers everything and tapes everything that we have in between. So it's taping the, the front piece to the back piece of plastic. And there. I'm going to show you, sometimes I'm going to show you how each corner looks. And when I put my finger like this to push it up straight, and then I'm pushing it to catch, to gather that last piece of plastic. And then this one, because I wanted to show you the different corners, I'm going to just clip that a little bit. off the excess there. And the last edge, we're gonna, again we're going to straighten it up and then push it over. I'm going to turn it over and there's my, my, ed, my metal edge. And then what I want to do is I want to take a pencil and I want to make sure that it's smooth. And you can see how the different corners are. You, this one here is where I didn't cut it, so it kind of sticks out a little bit. And then this one is where it's cut, and it gives a little bit better corner for the front edge. I like that. Make sure you go all your corners, and there you have it. Now, remember when I was showing you the different squares that we were doing? I want to show you that you don't have to be so simple. You can actually take this as a grid and you can you can do different shapes. Here's one with a heart. So I just took my grid and I, I cut my pieces so that they would fit in that same grid. And the same thing doing a leaf. This is a leaf, again cutting it to fit into the the different the grid so that shows you how versatile this project can really be it can be really simple or you can get a little bit more detailed so what do you think of that project isn't it great you know you don't have to just stop at using cereal boxes too you can use the soda can boxes the boxes that soda cans come in any boxes that any food products come in everything that has a colorful um, box print to it works great on that project now, I've got another project with recycling cardboard cereal boxes. And this is a project that I actually taught at the local preschool here for ages two to five, but it's a great project for all kids. And it's also showing them and teaching them that they need to recycle things that would normally be thrown away. Let's take a look. So here's what you're gonna need to make your cereal box tic-tac-toe. I have a piece of this cereal box and this piece that I'm using is six by six. You can adjust it any way you want. You can make it larger or smaller, whatever you need to create what, the size that you want. You're also going to need nine pieces that are one and three quarters by one and three quarters. That's if you're using the six inch piece of cereal box. You're going to need five each. So you're going to need 10 of the water bottle caps and you're going to need 10 little washers that fit on the, the bottom of the water bottle caps. If you don't want to use the water bottle caps, you want to use what you have around the house, you can also use buttons. And you're also going to need some, some mag either magnetic tape or some magnets. And of course you're going to need some glue. So like I said, the first thing is to cut your pieces. I actually use a paper cutter. It makes it really, really easy. If you don't have a paper cutter, then just measure it off on the back of your cereal box. 
I turn it over and then I take my pieces and I just put a little bit of glue and then just place them. And I don't necessarily go for all the same color, but it's kind of fun because then you can see the pieces better. Looks like I've got one that's a little bigger. <laughs> but any, it works. And like I said, the kids love to do this because it's a, it's a project that they can play with and play with and play with. And we got two more here. And I don't know if you saw, though, when I was putting on the glue. You don't need very much glue. Try and teach the kids that they don't need very much glue. Okay, on the bottom of the water bottle cap that's on the flat, well, actually, it's the top of it, you're going to put your washer. So you put a little bit of glue on the back of the washer, place it, and let it dry. Now, this particular one has like a little ledge in it. So what I do is I have this paper punch. It's about an inch paper punch, and I just punch out my piece, and then I glue it in on that ledge. And this, you remember that you're going to have to do five of these that are the same color, so they all, this one should all be red. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to peel off the paper of the back of the magnetic tape, and I'm going to put it down. And that is where my, my pieces, see this one's already dry, this is where my washer's already dry, and I have a green piece. So that's where they'll stick. So when, when the kids are playing, the pieces won't fall off because you have that magnetic piece. And so you would make five green and you would make five red or whatever color to make your piece. Now, like I said, too, if you're going to do the buttons, and you know, the buttons are also going to have a washer on the back so that they would actually fit into the onto the magnetic tape. And then also I wanted to show you that I made a bigger one so you're not just limited to making a small one. And this one has the buttons on it. And then this one also shows you where I did just plain paper. I used some like construction paper and just made some plain paper ones. And it's the same thing. They won't fall off. It shows you the different colors. Wasn't that fun? Kids just love that project. So that's all for my show today. I want to thank Candace J for her for sharing her project. That was just fabulous. And if you have any questions, you want more information on any of the projects on today's show, be sure you go to cooltocraft.com. I'm Heidi Borchers, and I'll see you next time on Eco Heidi. Bye bye.